Hi, on the Agilent U1272A meter review I just did, I showed how if you put 240 volts mains on the ohms range, that this thing, while it would survive, and that's good, it would take some time to recover, uh, possibly many, many minutes to recover before it actually gave you an accurate reading again. And that's a standard test I do on all multimeters to see if the input protection's any good. If it can survive 240 volts on the ohms range, it's beautiful. And this one did, but it just had that recovery time, quite possibly due to a PTC input protection uh, device heating up and taking some time to cool back down. And well, you know, fair enough. Okay, uh, but a few people said, well, that's going to happen on every multimeter or any multimeter. Well, is it? I think we should try it. Let's go. Let's start out by revisiting the Agilent. There it is. I've got my 10K precision resistor in here. It's spot on 10K. Now, let's stick 240 volts in here. Just be very careful if you're going to do this test, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in there and I'm going to leave that there for 10 seconds. So let's give that a go. I'll do that on every multimeter. 10 seconds. And that's about 10. All right, take it back off and let's put it back on here and we'll find that it's bingo. It's not accurate anymore. In fact, it's it's going up. It's going up and up, but that will eventually recover. And there it is. It reached a point and it's now headed back down. So let's try another meter and see what happens. And here we have the classic Fluke 87. This is the brand new model with the uh, GSM fix. It's measuring 10K there, so let's give it a try, shall we? Plug it in, and it's going to tell us it's a uh, it beep there. Let's wait our 10 seconds, just to, if these things are heating, if a PTC is heating up or something like that, that's about 10 seconds, and let's put it back. And let's see what happens. Hardly, oh, there's a slight change, tiny, not nearly as large as the fluke. I'm going to give that a minute or so, see if it uh, cools down. And it only took a minute or so, and it actually has. But even uh, when it uh, did, straight after the uh, test jump up, that was still well within spec, well under 0.05%, so not a problem. Let's try the Gossen MetroHit Extra Meter. It's not too far off the nominal 10k there. Let's stick it in, 240 volts, and 10 seconds. It's uh, flashing there to presumably indicate that uh, it's not a happy little camper. And that should just about do it. And let's try it again. Once again, that one has gone up a little bit, but it recovers very quickly. And, but not nearly as much, again, not nearly as much as the Agilent does. There you go. And another Gossen MetroHit, but this time the MetroHit Energy Meter. In we go. And let's see. This one just reads uh, zero ohms, which is uh, different to the extra. So that's our 10 seconds are up. Oh, that was fairly significant. There you go. But it recovers very quickly. Oy, it's gone on the negative side. There you go. It is playing around a bit. And that's the first one that actually went negative. There you go. I'll have to see if that one comes good. And it slowly uh, recovered, but this one actually took uh, quite some time. So that's rather unusual. But of course, all these meters, they are designed to recover from these sorts of overloads. So they eventually will, and they'll come back perfect. And we've got the winner of our $100 meter shootout, BK Precision 2709B. So a totally different price class instrument to the ones we've looked at so far, but let's give it a go. And this one's actually switched off. There you go. So it wasn't a happy little camper, but let's leave the, uh, let's leave it for 10 seconds. And 
that's about it and we're going to have to probably switch that one off and on again of course it doesn't matter that it actually uh, switches off as long as it physically survives there you go that one had no issue didn't change a thing although because this is uh, one it's not a four and a half digit meter we can't see that um, digit beyond that but there you go maybe I should uh, leave it on for like a minute or something and see what happens all right I've left that one on for a minute so that's a fairly long time let's switch it off and on again and it looks fine bang spot on this one's no problem at all so even this cheapy really doesn't get affected by 240 volts on the ohms it doesn't heat up or drift or do anything and I just so happen to have another Gossen meter the MetroHit world once again it's only uh, three and a half digit or six thousand count or something like that it's not four and a half digit but let's try it out and once again it gives a <laughs> reading around a couple of hundred ohms there and that's about 10 seconds or so let's put that back yeah there we go that one's gone low there you go that's rather unusual but it's coming back is it i saw it yep it slowly climbs back up and i'm having absolutely no doubt it will eventually come back good and we'll get right down into the cheap $50 sub $50 category now the XTech EX320 let's give it a go and boom it's not uh, doing anything there and our time is just about up and let's put it back in and see what happens Oh yeah, there we go. That one really, really overloaded there, but it eventually got to 10 and it's going lower, 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 and it'll eventually settle straight back to 10. Now it's nasty time. We've got the Vichy VC99 cheap eBay crap. Let's uh, plug it in. I'm pretty sure I did this test in the uh, shootout and it uh, does survive, so there's no problems doing that but we'll try it here and see what we get six um, and once again that one's gone on the low side interestingly but it will eventually come back good now let's go back to the fluke here for a second and I'm going to put it on uh, 6000 count mode so it's spot on and I'm going to leave it there for a minute and see what happens. Right so that's been about a minute I believe and let's take it out and try it again. There you go look it's barely <laughs> changed one least significant digit you could almost strike that up to uh, to you know a rounding of the least significant digit so really in general use the fluke really doesn't have it it barely has an issue there at all even after a minute and check it out after all this time i've gone through all those other meters must have been at least uh, 10 minutes or something like that it's still the uh, agilent is still not back to normal so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on for a minute it's because that was reading spot on 1k so let's put it on for a minute and see what happens and that's about a minute so let's take that off and try it again yeah, see that's very significantly out, 10.2k. So there you go, the Agilent was a whopping uh, like 2.3% out after well out of spec, well, well out of spec, um, like by an order of magnitude out of spec after a minute of 240 on the Owens range. But the Fluke 87 
was still almost spot on to the almost to the least significant digit well within spec after a minute so there you go the agilence not as good on overload recovery and as you did see it did happen on uh quite a few of the other meters but not all of them so it's not an inherent trait in uh, meters by the looks of it although it does seem to be fairly common there you go that's a rather interesting test so hope you found that interesting and I'll catch you next time.